fresh from New York City. Let's give her a warm Binghamton welcome. Dr. Sandra Steinberg. <laughs> I was in New York City last night and the public transportation system kind of let me down this morning. So, I was in New York last night, here I am, I'm on my way to Cortland. Tonight I'm speaking again. Before that I was in Pennsylvania. Before that I was in Minnesota talking to people who are committing civil disobedience because their land is being turned inside out for frack sand mining. So that the bluffs and hills along the Mississippi River can be loaded into rail cars and brought here to serve as agents of destruction for our bedrock. So we stand in solidarity with people all around the, the nation who are saying there's got to be a better way than to blow up our bedrock and inject it with toxic chemicals to bring bubbles of methane out, light them on fire so we can make our tea kettles whistle and turn the lights on. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> We got sun, we got water, we got wind, we all numb, and they last forever. That's our future, not some kind of brutal, fossilized past. So we're, we have this incredible, heroic role that we're playing here. We shouldn't feel depressed, we should feel like it's going to be us in a little postage stamp picture in the history books. <laughs> Like we look at the little postage stamp size pictures of Harriet Tubman right. yeah. and all the abolitionists and the women's suffrage and everyone else who's fought for human rights. Now it's our turn. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Yeah. So we in the Finger Lake stand in solidarity with you in the southern tier. We recognize that we are two branches of the same tree. We share water, rivers, watersheds. And we know that we are all together upstream from the people all the way down to Maryland and the Chesapeake Bay and we feel that we are standing up for them too and for their children. We share air and we know that fracking releases hazardous air pollutants like formaldehyde, benzene, toluene, propane, butane, ethane, all those other hydrocarbons that are down there like vaporized fossils trapped in the shale along with the methane. When you get the methane out, they are also liberated. So the, each gas well is like a chimney in the earth with all these vaporized toxins coming out of it. And those toxins can blow for 200 miles. So what we put in our air here in the southern tier blows east to west and will end up in the lungs of a child somewhere in New Jersey. Which is why yesterday I was participating in a press call with the legislators of New Jersey who are also calling on Governor Cuomo to do no sacrifice zone here in the southern tier. They don't want your air pollution either. And they don't want all the flow, uh, flow back frack waste to be chucked into New Jersey and dumped somewhere over there because they know they've lived with stuff like that for a long time. They're done. They're done. So they're standing up for us too. So whatever happens tomorrow, whatever happens on Thursday or Friday or the rest of this month, we will fight each battle as it comes. So right now we're fighting very hard to prevent Governor Cuomo from giving into the gas industry. We're inviting him to stand with us. If that battle should change and he indicates he's not standing with us, we'll fight a different kind of battle. But you have to fight as hard as you can with the battle you have now. So the battle we have now, from now until the governor makes his decision, is to tell him to make the right decision and keep saying it and keep saying it that we are his future, not the gas industry. That's what that's the present moment that we're in right now. So I'll close with this. This is uh the February Declaration, which I'm now working on. It's my new writing project. It's for now, for the moment we find ourselves in now, so it has to be done quickly. <laughs> I'm going to go home and finish it. <laughs> and I just, I'll give you a sneak preview of what it says, and I think you'll recognize what document the February Declaration is based on. I'm going to read you the opening 
and I'm going to read you the closing paragraph. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for people of one state to declare their intention to resist through peaceful protest and nonviolent direct actions, the transformation of their communities, landscapes, roadways, and lives by a polluting, accident-prone industry, namely the shale gas extraction industry. Should their governor decide to lift a moratorium on high-volume horizontal hydraulic fracking, decent respect for public opinion requires that they declare the causes that impel them. We hold these truths to be self-evident that we are each 65% water by weight and inhale a pint of atmosphere with every breath. That a healthy economy requires healthy people. That it is the duty of government to provide for our basic safety and security. That only 1% of the world's water exists as fresh, liquid, drinkable water. That New York is blessed with abundant water resources that will grow more precious in the future that this water is not contained in discrete compartments, but rather flows above and below the surface as a moving interconnected web, that we are a densely settled state, that our forests provide us flood control, that New York is the second largest wine producer in the nation, the third largest milk producer, and the nation's third largest producer of organic food. And it goes on like that. <laughs> So here's the, you know, the main thesis point here. <laughs> we solemnly publish and declare our independence from fracking. Yeah! Governor Cuomo, should you allow just one well to be drilled in New York, we will stand up for our families, our communities, and shared commons in peaceful but forceful resistance. For many of us, actions will extend to civil disobedience. For we are less frightened of jail cells than of poisoned water. All of us, all of us will hold you personally responsible for allowing our beautiful state to be colonized and plundered by a brutal extractive industry whose practices endanger our lives and livelihoods, whose quarry contributes to the destabilizing of our climate and the increased likelihood of more Hurricane Sandys. Those who oppose fracking in New York State are determined, resourceful, and organized into a growing movement. We know how to work when we are tired. We will not desist to the future of New York and the future generations who will depend on its water and air. We pledge our honor and our resolve because this is what love looks like that's dr sandra steingraber isn't she phenomenal and she's about to go up to another speaking gig so i want to we're going to wrap up